evening, everyone, and thank you for coming to the channel. That is Deb Snail Sport 8 Squirrel, where we do reviews on marriage to medicine, the Real Housewives of Atlanta, and celebrities in the entertainment sector. Okay, but as usual, let's get me to that 10,000 mark of subscribers. I would greatly appreciate it before or on June 2020. But again, thank you for your current support, your past support, and your future support of my channel, okay? Really means a lot to me that I do have people that want to come over and see what I got to say on different subjects. So, thank you, thank you, thank you. But let's get on into this video, okay? A must-see video at that. We're going to be talking about Merit and Medicine, the episode that aired tonight, uh, Sunday, October 20th, my Easter Standard Time, 9 o'clock. The article was called, or the show was called, Showdown in Savannah, Season 7, Episode 7. All right, to give you just a brief summary of what really went down, uh, same old thing. The women are trying to come together in unity, trying to respect one another, just that and a third. And they're still in Savannah. They, they're having like one uh, night where they're having a dinner. To solidify their whole unity of healing that they were supposed to get on this girl's trip to Savannah. Um, to least to say that they it was an epic fail. Um, Jackie did her best. She tried her best. She tried to uh, make amends through the friendships. The ones that were kind of tattered and torn away and put to the wayside. But these women are very strong minded. They have their own minds, their own ideals and, and the people that they want to hang with they already know that as well. So they just definitely didn't really need Jackie's input. But the trip was fun. They got away and it was okay. Okay. Um, that morning they had a trip to a historical black uh, founded church in Savannah. Uh, the pastor was giving the history of the whole church and how it derived, how it came to be. And um, it was very uh, educational. Uh, but Savannah is a time or a town that really is a historical place. You have so much knowledge down there and so much rich history. Uh, you just pretty much have to go and see. It's a rural town, so know, know that it's like country setting. It's kind of remind you of like Mayberry that we used to see on TV back on uh, channel, uh, what is it called, 17 TBS when I was growing up. I don't know what it's called now. But anyway, because um, I don't really watch that much TV. But uh, the pastor was giving them, like I said, a, a, a rich history on the founding of the church and uh, he evidently, Jackie had gave him a clue of why they really were there. And he was saying, you know, uh, we as human beings need to think more of doing good than doing bad. We shouldn't be so quick to tear down other individuals. We need to build them up, uh, you know, and foster good, wholesome type relationships instead of just fighting and fussing and bickering all the time and just being petty every chance you get. You know, that's just like wasted negative energy. Uh, that you shouldn't be partaking of. Then he was, um, you know, it was a time where uh, Jackie wanted everybody to come and, and confess what was ever what was on their mind, what was plaguing their mind, to not be so receptive to being positive in the group, and you know, like lay your burdens down in a sense. And of course, uh, we didn't hear Buffy's uh, testimony or toy. I don't know why. Maybe it was because maybe it was boring. I don't know. <laughs> Lack of time, who knows? But it just is what it is. And then we do have a scene where we have the two couples when they get back in town, Mariah and Aiden and Eugene and Toy, they go out for lunch and they talk about all the indiscretions that were going on at, in the you know during the Savannah trip and how Jackie did not even want to, you know, pretty much uh look at the documentation that showed uh, Mariah was free of drug usage and, and all that kind of stuff. But of course, um, they had to show where well, Eugene asked to see the results pretty much. And he found it from conclusive evidence of him being in the medical field that um, Mariah had no drugs in her. And he was pretty much alluding to, well, Jack is not your friend because if she was your friend, she would have at least looked at the papers and, you know, saw the evidence for herself. But I had a kind of a question about it because I know I saw, just like you all saw, the 
the taping of when they were cutting her hair. But I don't know, is that a weave that Mariah has on her head or is that really her hair? Because then I'm like, I'm signing on the whole type of uh, uh, documentation because if you're cutting out weave or extensions, that's not your real hair. You know, and like I said, it, you know, does Mariah wear a wig? Is, is this a wig what I'm seeing on her head? Because then I'm inclined to believe like Quad <laughs> that it was fake and fraudulent. You know what I'm saying? It was inconclusive uh, of what Quad was trying to say on the last episode. So y'all get in them comments and tell me, is that Mariah's real hair or is it um a weave or extension? Because then, yeah, there's a file on play Mariah's playing games. And nobody's buying it. But let's go on and get into each one of them. I individually talk about them after I give a synopsis or a summary of what I saw the story to be, uh, the show that aired tonight. We're going to get on right into Jacket, okay? Because she is the most logical one on the uh, in the group. But sometimes she kind of like lean to one side, like she's biased against certain women. That they can do no wrong in her eyes, even though it's quite frank that it's very blatant that they do stuff that they shouldn't be doing that's going to hurt another member in their group. But Jackie seems to like turn a blind eye to that. But anyway, um, uh, Contessa and uh, Dr. Jackie is having a girl's talk about her situation and how she really feels and this, that, and third about uh, her having to have to give up her dreams of uh, attaining another, um, what do you call it, achievement in the medical field. And she was basically telling Jackie, yeah, it hurts, this, that, and the third, but I'm all about my family. But I just don't understand why he didn't help me out or support me. And, and she said, because I want to be like you. You're a writer. You're a doctor. You're a motivational speaker. You're this, that, and whatever. And I, I want those same, ac excuse me, those same accolades. And then Jack was like sitting, listening to her, you know, very peaceful uh, and listening to her thoroughly so she could make her diagnosis and give it right back to her, whether she liked it or not. But she did do good. She said, well, you know, you're saying I got this, that, and the third, but one thing that is lacking is that I don't have children. So that was a very eye-opening experience, and that was very well eloquent eloquently spoken that Jackie put that on the forefront. That is something Jackie had never gotten a chance to obtain uh, because her uh, husband is downright, I think, if I'm I'm sure if I don't know, if I speak the wrong thing, somebody's going to come and correct me, and I'm fine with that. But I, I don't think Curtis wanted to adopt any children. He wanted to have his own biological children. So that was one of the feats where I think adoption wasn't going to be uh, – uh, uh, a go-to thing that she could think about doing because Curtis was unwilling to do that. Um, so that was a very uh point, <coughs> excuse me, pivotal point that she was making. And you know, I was like, much respect. You know, at least you know what's going on in your marriage. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Some women just be out there. Some men, I don't know what's going on. You know, this, that, and the third. They ain't trying to find the blame that could be in themselves that's hindering. A successful relationship or marriage. So kudos to Jackie on that one. And then Jackie just pretty much told her, you know, I think you're trying to blame your husband when you actually didn't want to take responsibility, even though Contessa was saying it was a cheaper school. You could finish uh, one year lesser than it would have taken you two years to do what she was trying to do an accelerated program where she could finish in one year and it was a cheaper school. So she just matched all the bases out, but she didn't really give a good accountance of how her husband really felt about the situation. She was just trying to gloss over that, like he should have just stuck with it and, and gave me my opportunity. But, you know, this is what it is. But Jackie had to uh, uh, say a little prayer for her, or she wanted to say a little prayer for her and for God to watch over her life, her husband, her children, just everything. When it came to her and then she's like, but Jack, I don't need no counsel. I got you. Jack said, uh-uh, honey, <laughs> you need a counselor. And I'm like, yep, you need a professional counselor, even though Jack was giving you golden nuggets to um, think about. But no, she's not in that realm of thinking and she's too close to the situation. OK, so you need somebody that's not biased. Or unbiased. Yeah, uh, non-biased to the situation. Jack clearly would be biased because uh 
she would think about, you know, women's empowerment, uh, the feminine movement, the feminist movement, and, and everything. And she would de definitely go for you as a default because you're more of a person she can find similarity in in things uh, or way of thinking versus her trying to go with your husband. Okay, so it's pretty much like a gender thing. Um, then Jack was having this unmasking part. I mean, she's saying everybody wear different faces. They show whatever face or situation or environment they're in that they need to put out or project. They don't really show their faces. But when you're around your good girlfriends, your good unit of, of individuals that understand you and uh, care less about your flaws, they just love it on you. Uh, I don't know group, what group she was talking about because the group that I was seeing was nowhere near that. But maybe that's Jackie's way of wanting that particular uh, union of sisterhood. Uh, I don't think it would be with these group of girls because they all uh, are thinking individual and want to come to a unity when it fits them, whenever it fits them. OK, but uh, yeah, so that's what was the um, reason for the mask and this and that. So uh, Toya was just killing it. She was just like, uh, uh she was being so shaded to Jackie and her whole format of how she wanted to bring peace in their unity. It was just crazy. I was laughing because she just tickles me the way she comes out with stuff. Uh, then Jackie has this idea where she's going to have a, a nice dinner for them in a barn. And these women done got dressed up uh, except for, I think, Quad had on jeans or something. And Toya, she going to come relax no matter what uh, environment she's in. She's going to think comfort first. And I, I ain't got nothing wrong with that. But yeah, Jackie had this uh, barn decked out to the nines. Uh, how, you know, it could have been a less a looking a less like formal wear uh she should have told them it's gonna be in a barn setting y'all probably need to dress comfortable or whatnot but she didn't tell them that and she was dressed like for the nines too like she was going into a ballroom or whatever so it is what it is it wasn't a bad scene but of course um toy, uh, toy was laughing she was kiki and giggling the whole time and of course we know dr heavenly if you know her uh stilo Pretty much, uh-uh, Dr. Heavenly wasn't having that. <laughs> she wasn't having that at all. She didn't like it. She didn't want to be there. It was just not her ambiance, okay? Her creme de la creme. But anyway, uh, and then it's a nice little scene where um, Jackie is sitting on the porch with Dr. Simone, and they're just having a little girl banter. Okay, that was it on Miss Jackie. When it came to Dr. Heavenly, you know, Dr. Heavenly didn't too much like nothing about the trip. She dogged the house out that they were staying in, saying it looked old and raggedy. It could be the Amity be a horror house. Uh, she felt like at the dinner that last night they were spending in Savannah in the barn, she was saying something bit her. And she's asking Jackie, why did you bring us to this type of setting? Jackie tells her, because sometimes y'all act like cattle. Y'all act like animals. And Dr. Heavenly couldn't say shit. Jackie shut her down real quick. Okay, Dr. Heavenly's talking about why is everybody, when, you know, something happened at the table, whatnot, a, a big disagreement, everybody got to go to the bathroom. What's up with that? And I ain't want to talk no more about Dr. Heavenly and her mess. It was a hot, she was just a hot mess, period. Um, then Toya asked her something about uh, Mariah and the test, uh, the, the drug test and the cocaine usage. And Dr. Heaven just got up saying, I, I ain't finna, I, no, you ain't finna get me into that. I'm not talking about that, Toya. And she pretty much got up from the table and walked away. Uh, and then had a scene with Dr. Heaven and her daughter in her room, bringing back some clothes that she felt her daughter had put in her closet. And the girl, child, the girl looked just like, um, Dr. Heavenly, and she got Dr. Heavenly's bad attitude. I'm like, oh my goodness, please don't put these young folks. She's 14 years old, but she's still young, but she weighing out her mama. I'm like, oh Lord, she. this is what Dr. Heavenly, this is her karma, her daughter, because her daughter is, you know, saying her lips was dry, her lip, her lips did look dry. She would ask her mama why she in her room, and I'm like, see, that would have did. I would say, cut the camera off. I'm going to get this little girl straight. She don't have, you rent the room, baby. You don't own nothing in this house. Uh, what you think is yours is just a perception. Uh, you really, in a sense, you're in a dream world because this is not you. This is not your income. You don't pay no bills, him. So you need to get it correct. You know, but she was just all just pretty just being disrespectful with, to Dr. Heavenly. She was telling her she need to get out of her room. She need to stop touching stuff. She was asking her why is she here. Oh, just just plain nasty. Okay. Um. 
But that's pretty much it for Dr. Heaven and her daughter, uh, Mariah. So hopefully she, no, Laura, I'm sorry. So hopefully Laura will uh, get some of her daddy ways, you know, not passive aggressive, but just tone down her attitude because she really thinks she's the uh, it factor over there in that household. But if they let her do that, then that's what she's going to be like the rest of her life. We go to Mariah. Mariah's talking about, or she's talking to Toya about uh, getting passed on everything. She feels the women are not supporting her. Uh, Mariah tells um uh, her name Toya, that her husband is sending the paperwork that shows and proves that she's negative uh, for testing for cocaine. And I'm like, Mariah, why are you having your husband send you paperwork? These women don't care one way or the other. And you said it, it yourself. But, it, you know, it's good for TV, bring up more drama. Then, um, you know, like I said, I have a question about did we really test Mariah's real hair? Is that Mariah's real hair on her head? Or is that extensions or a weave or a wig? So what are we really testing? I don't know. But um, she gets, it's a scene in the church where she gets up and gives her testimony uh, the last day in Savannah. And she's saying uh, she's apologizing to Jackie if she did anything to hurt her. You know, by her using her passion, her pain, and honesty. And she wanted Jackie to forgive her if she felt that Jackie disrespected her in any way. Um, there's nothing to talk about when it comes to Buffy. She was just there. Only thing they gave us, she was showing being asleep and snoring, uh, sitting up and on, you know, on the sofa. So that was a piss poor even shot. They should have just left Buffy out of it. We saw, you know, a few and bits and pieces of her, but it wasn't worth even covering her. Go to Quad. Quad is talking about the barnyard scene. She's not liking it either. She's, you know, getting her feel like, I know Jackie didn't bring us to this place. You know, it's like she's high on the hog or whatnot. Um, Quad is looking at Simone when Simone calls herself telling Mariah and Quad that she's just disappointed and disgusted with them and this you know, they shouldn't be acting this way. And then Simone called herself getting so uh, emotional, connected to the situation with Quad and Katelsa and Buffy had to take her to the restroom so she can get herself together. But pretty much it was just Simone wanted to be on the spotlight, wanted to be in the spotlight. And, it, you know, it definitely was played that way. Um, then Quad is also, uh, you know, telling Simone she just needs to stop it, leave it alone. Her and Mariah would have their you know, committed relationship where they tolerate each other, but they're, they're not going to be friends. They're not going to be friends. But in the whole episode, it showed me none of y'all can't be friends with each other because if you got you got friends like that, you damn sure don't need no enemies. They need to be in your circle, and that's the only people you deal with because that, that's a hot mess. That's not a friendship at all. And, of course, um, Claude tells the minister and the people in the church that, you know, she don't she stand there before them bare naked. <laughs> Everybody like, oh, hell, she's been going to a, a deep-rooted uh, speech, and we don't even really want to hear it. But she talks about being bare naked, where her emotions are showing naked for them to see, her heart is showing, and she's healing and all this kind of stuff. I don't know what the hell talk, talk, Qua was talking about, moving on from her. Then we got Toya. Toya is just amusing this episode, as all episodes Um She's getting on to Eugene about not even knowing the pool guy, but Eugene's trying to keep everything in tip-top shape order because he's paying for the house and he just wants everything to stay pretty much fresh and clean. But, you know, when you got kids, please. Anyway, um, Toya is telling Mariah you need to show the other ladies or especially Jackie your test results so things could, you know, look better in your uh, eyesight towards them, but, you know, it is what it is. Toya's laughing at Jack idea for the mask unveiling. Talking about these people got so many faces. Well, ain't no sense of letting them uh, be masked up. Just let them show the face that they're showing us because we don't know who they are. We just have to look what what comes out of their mouths and adjust ourselves accordingly, pretty much. Then we got Toya talking about being in a special situation, not involving men, meaning she has uh, dipped and dived into the lady pool, lesbian type uh, demeanor and behavior before she was married to Eugene. So she knows all about that life, okay? Uh, clock your own tea. I like Toya about that. Then Toya was saying something stupid, like every time she see the word Kate, she think about Coke, meaning cocaine, meaning Quad and Mariah situation. Like, come on now. <laughs> And Mariah doesn't find it funny at all. Uh, and then Toya wants to show Jackie the test results, but Jackie refuses. 
to show and see the test results. Uh, she ain't here for it. She ain't going to get involved. And, and that's just how it's going to be. We go to Contessa. Contessa's talking to Jack about her resentment. Dr. Jack is telling her, don't be resentful. You need to hash it out. You and your husband need to go to counseling. Uh, Jack is telling her, you're going to be sorry, you know, with harboring such resentment if you're not addressing it because it's going to lead and bleed over into your marriage. It's not going to be a good thing. Um, she went after Jack was calling herself, giving her advice and her two cents in, uh, looking uh, from the outside in on Contessa's situation with her husband. Uh, Jackie says, you need to go see a therapist. And, and of course, Contessa saying, you could be my therapist, but you, no. <laughs> and Jack was like, no, I'll pray for you, but no, I can't be your therapist. Um, Contessa in her confessional, she's mocking, mocking Dr. Simone about what she said about unity and quad and Mariah and this and third. She just like, girl, this is a long rooted situation. It's going to take them two women to work it out. And we ain't got nothing to say. Okay. Um, the women get so upset during the episode. They just don't even finish their meals. But Contessa said, I ain't come all this way. I'm hungry. I'm going to go get that food left. And she went and talked with someone. And they kind of catered up everything and put them in like uh, to-go boxes. And the women, they ate good that night. Okay. And she was pretty much getting like Jack. I always want to have peace within the ladies. You know, just as long as everybody being cordial and don't want to tear out each other's hairs and stuff like that out their heads, they fine. Let's just press on. Then we got Dr. Simone. Uh, you know, like I said, she was just a hot mess the whole time. Um, you had Cecil over there. They were showing a scene between Cecil and Scott where uh, Scott came over to visit with Cecil, have some, you know, guy bonding time. And he was talking about the little issue him and his wife contestants having. And he, he don't want her to be resentful. And, you know, what did him and his wife uh Simone and uh, Cecil, when they were having bad problems, what did they do? Cecil was saying, you know, you got to be forthright. If you want the lady in your life, you got to continue to work on it. It's a process. He told him he might need to want to think about see speaking, uh, seeing a counselor so they can speak uh, with someone that's not biased. And, you know, they don't know too much about the situation. And, you know, it can help them out. It, uh, counseling helped him and his wife out. But they were going through their thing. So it seems like um, Scott is being receptive to what uh, Cecil is saying. But then he's going to uh, compare him and his wife to Kobe and Shaq. <laughs> I'm like, there's no hope. <laughs> there's no hope. This man going to still get what he wants. But that's still going to be on a resentful horse. And it just is what it is. Uh, but I really did see as Dr. Simone, Simone as being a bully this episode, especially when she was trying to tell Mariah to look at her when she's talking to her, you know, look up, you know, from the table, you know, make eye contact with her and listen to what she's trying to tell her. Like, you know, she's talking to a kid or something. So I, I kind of felt kind of bad about that situation because <clears throat> all of them are grown women. Now, whether they demeanor or they act show that they are. Um, they are grown women and everybody needs to be respectful of how they present themselves. And they just had talked about this when they had their first dinner, when they arrived to uh, Savannah about approaching a situation with caution and respect. And here we got Simone still cutting up at the very end. OK, but that's all I had for Merit and Medicine. I was like, Lord, these ladies ain't going to never work it out. They so intelligent. They uh, got things going on for themselves. But when it comes to them not being shaded towards each other, child, please. All that stuff went out the window. They still come up battling one another and talking behind each other's backs. And they were lying in the house of the Lord, saying they're going to get their lives together. And they're going to be, you know, more receptive to one another. And then going back when they get home uh, to Atlanta, <laughs> they're going to go back to status quo. Oh, at each other's uh, heels, okay? But that's all I had, y'all. I hope y'all enjoyed the um, recap of Married to Medicine Season 7, Episode 7, and it was called Showdown in Savannah. All right, guys, y'all be good to y'all selves, and I'll see you next video. Bye-bye.